<laughs> uh, Vic, yeah. would you run that tape too, please, please, by the way? Which I was supposed to remind you to, oh, well. to start. Thank oh, you. Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Atheist Experience. Once again, <sighs> my, uh, my name is Jeff D. Co-host is Martin Wagner. How this show do? is brought to you by the Atheist community of Austin, a non-profit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. We're live July 22, 2001. Mm, the ACA has weekly meeting, meetings every Sunday morning at the Hot Jumbo Bagel Shop, 307 West 5th Street at 10.30 a.m., except for the first Sunday of each month when we have our, lec our lecture series at 11 a.m. in the Longhorn Room of Furs Cafeteria at North Cross Mall. Our next lecture will be on August 5, and the speaker will be Mark Lowy on the subject of physics. Oh, gosh, what else? We got... Uh, there's, there's all kinds of chatter here in the studio. <laughs> Is everything okay? We, yeah, well, we just had an attractive everything, shot of you. Everything cool? Yeah. Crazy last-minute technical stuff? I don't want to do it anymore. So we got... <laughs> the Atheist Community of Austin's got all kinds of, like, other side activities, too, and often we, we read about that. Come on out of the bagel shop and if if you're interested, and and we'll tell you all about it. Yeah. Uh, there were four new people at Godless Gamers. Five. Five new, new people. New people at Godless, people at Godless, Godless Gamers. Gamers being one of those side activities. That That's we right. Um, <clears throat> how about some quick news? How about some news? Okay, why not? Let's do that. Um, some bad news to start off with, though, folks. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. HR, that HR seven passed the House. Yeah. Which is not surprising. The House is run by Republicans. Yeah. Republicans are run by the religious right. Yeah, so but a was... whole passel of Democrats crossed the aisle to vote in favor of that. Mm. Just rubbish. Yeah, because they did that bogus compromise. But anyway, uh, the House voted mostly along party lines yesterday, to, uh, or actually last Wednesday, to approve a bill to allow more federal money to go to religious charities that deliver social services. Republican leaders overcame protests from Democrats and moderate Republicans that the charities would be exempt from a federal ban on discrimination in hiring on the basis of religion. The bill passed 233 to 198. The leader secured the votes after pledging that changes would be made to the bill after it goes to the Senate to bar religious groups that receive federal money from discriminating on other grounds, particularly against homosexuals. The bill faces an uncertain future, though, in the Democratic-led Senate. Majority Leader Tom Daschle, who plans to schedule debate in the Senate this fall, has indicated that he thinks the House bill would allow discrimination. Daschle said he and his fellow Democrats would hold the House leaders to their word when the measure comes up for a Senate vote this fall. Uh, he says, quote, I can't imagine that we could pass any bill that would tolerate slipping back into a level of intolerance that would be acceptable in today's society. That's Tom Daschle saying that. Democratic leaders complained that the bill would offer little new help to faith-based groups while potentially eroding federal, state, and local civil rights protections. Um, we've driven a huge hole in civil rights laws, said Representative Gerald Nadler, a New York Democrat and leader of the opposition. I hope the Senate will have better sense, he says. Gay rights groups and other critics became particularly alarmed when it was reported two weeks ago that the White House had decided to grant a request from the Salvation Army to exempt government-funded religious charities from local laws that ban discrimination against homosexuals. The White House then quickly backpedaled, announcing that it would not provide such an exemption through a regulation. But lawmakers contended that the House bill would have the same effect because it would exempt the groups that receive federal money from local anti-bias laws. So uh, here we see just the Bush administration throwing off the cloak and revealing itself for... Uh, yeah, but let's not, let's not be too hard on the Republicans, considering <clears throat> that, yeah. um, that certain Democrats, for example, um, uh, uh, Lieberman, well, have right. already announced that they intend to introduce their own Democratic faith-based initiative. So. Yeah. I mean, the, the nonsense goes marching on. Yeah, and the, the contempt for the Constitution goes marching on, very sadly. Anyway, here's some faith-based charity for you. Fundamentalist Christians in a southern Ontario town are fleeing to the U.S. to avoid child abuse charges. Seven children in one family already have been taken from their home by social workers and police because their parents refused to promise to stop disciplining them with sticks or straps. Scores of other Church of God worshipers, all women and children, have left Aylmer, a rural community of 6,000 people about 90 miles southwest of Toronto, for the United States to, be, uh, to avoid being asked if they will continue what they call adherence to biblical teaching. Church of God worshipers cite the Bible as the source for encouraging corporal punishment of children and insist on using rods or straps, saying the hand is for expressing love, while an implement is for administering <laughs> discipline. <laughs> discipline. Great. Yeah, listen to this one. 
Oh. Here's a guy. Here's a guy. Henry Hildebrandt, the uh, minister of this church. Listen to what he says. It's an actual quote from this that guy. What's a back massager for? I, no, I don't even. That, oh, I don't even <laughs> want to go there. Boy, the imagery is just vile. Uh, this oh, is. Listen to what this minister boy. from this church actually says. It clearly states in the Bible that corporal punishment should be used, and uh, that means, and that means more than a hand. He says the Bible talks about using an object. We find that works, and it works well. So, I mean, I can understand, you know, parents like disciplining their children every once in a while, but to, to express such enthusiasm for beating them with big bits of wood and leather is uh, genuine, genuinely sick. But anyway, that's... What does this remind you of? Why it reminds us of... Tony Alamo. Our pal Tony Alamo. We talked about this guy last week. I haven't heard any further reports of, oh, these, no. uh, of these pamphlets being I, distributed. I saw one in a gutter. Well, yeah, that could have been left over from last week. Uh, oh. Last week, the ta- the Austin was blitzed oh. by uh, handouts of this uh, Alamo Christian Ministries stuff. Dude. So uh, last week, we reported on Mr. Tony Alamo. And to just, re- just to, to tie this into the, um, the uh, corporal punishment thing, um, Alamo was charged in 1988 with the beating of an 11-year-old boy. He wasn't actually present. He was on the speakerphone. <laughs> telling his followers Dictating. exactly how many times to beat the kid for, uh, for, for his transgressions. And, and how many times was that, Jeff? That was... Um, big number, wasn't it? I, it's not in this section of the story, I'm afraid. I recall it. was it. a lot. It but was 140 I, times. 140 times? Yeah. He couldn't sit down for three weeks, apparently. Two to three weeks, yeah. that's right. And uh, quote, quotes uh, Tony Alamo, who was charged with child abuse in that case, Quote, I favor spanking children. It says so in the Bible. People have to decide whether to do what the Lord says or the state. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, you know. Boy. Uh, okay, so, um, but you had, you found some more information on Mr. Yeah, Allen. Yeah, I did it. Something I did a, that, I, that I missed in my hectic half-hour internet search. Yeah, I did a Google search on this guy, just uh-huh. like you did, and I found a report. This was from one of these Christian anti-cult sites. Yeah that uh, his, Alamo's first rise to notoriety uh, came in the early 1980s when his wife died. And he developed this pathetic, desperate, fanatical belief that God was going to resurrect her physically. So, uh-huh. reportedly, he kept his wife's embalmed body on display in his compound for six months while his followers prayed for her resurrection. And then she got up, right? Uh, well, I gather not. They oh. didn't say that, but uh, he probably, after a while, you know, uh, disposed of her and then made up some excuse, which Ugh. which uh, caused all his followers to say, oh, oh well, boy. there we go, and they kept believing We'd, we'd be following. really interested if anybody out there has, uh, has received any Alamo Christian Ministries pamphlets in the last week. But then if you haven't heard of this stuff, well, then that's great. That means his little blitzing didn't really work as well as he had hoped. Yeah. Anyway, you know, he had student towns that tried to stop him from handing out his literature. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> anyway, here's a little finesse. Uh, down under, a gunman stormed into an abortion clinic in Melbourne, Australia, on July 16th, pulled a rifle out of a bag, and shot and killed a security guard as an anti-abortion group held a prayer vigil outside. The assailant was tackled by two men in the waiting room who seized his weapon after the shooting. He was taken into custody, and police said he refused to answer questions or give his name when he appeared before a judge on charges of murder. Uh, any abortion protesters holding the vigil outside the clinic said they, they, they didn't know the suspect. They didn't know this guy, so that's what they say. Uh, either their, their prayers worked or they didn't. <laughs> now, if their prayers worked, you've got to wonder what they were praying for. Uh-huh. If their prayers didn't work, how come? Mm. Yeah, well. Uh, what, why have they found out what his motive was yet, though? Well, I, mean, I guess he didn't, didn't like abortion very much. Yeah. Well, obviously not, yeah. yeah. but. I, I don't know. Uh, uh, and then I had like to know some specifics. Yeah, nothing, no, nothing further on this. It's unusual. This is the first time that uh, the anti-abortion movement in Australia, which has been picking up steam a little bit, but has never been quite... They haven't resorted to just out-and-out murder down there like they've been doing here. Mm. here. So this, I think, is, is, is quite a step up for them, So, um, yeah, relatively speaking. A uh, recent ABC News BeliefNet poll identifies uh, 83% of Americans as Christians. Uh, most of the rest, 13%, have no religion, and then that just leaves 4% as adherents of all non-Christian religions combined. 13%, which falls nicely between that, you know, yeah. 10 to 15%, which I have heard yeah. quoted. Not so bad. Mm-hmm. So, uh, a majority. You, think, you know how many? What percentage of uh, the American population are fundamentalists? Uh, very small. It's actually. way less than 13. Oh yeah, way oh, yeah. less than 13. And, and yet they get all the press. Mm-hmm. What's up with that? 
Well, what the, is up with that? They're the most obnoxious and apparently the most moneyed, even though they're the least, uh, the, one of the least populous. Um, there's one Protestants, uh, just uh, some various figures here. I won't go into too many details of it, but just list a few. Protestants tend to have lower incomes than Catholics. 49% of evangelical Protestants have incomes under $50,000, as do 43% of non-evangelical Protestants, compared to 36% of Catholics. Income correlates with education. 36% of Catholics are college graduate. That declines to 23% of Protestants and 17% of Baptists. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, we can snicker about that. Oh, boy. But what percentage of non-believers? Non-religionists, I, 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 I didn't say. Didn't, didn't say but I, anyway, a majority yeah, of Americans fine. back the use of stem cells from human embryos for medical research. Ah. Like Four Nation Poll on the Controversial Science Found. Roy Morgan International Poll released on Tuesday as President uh, Bush was in the throes of deciding whether to allow taxpayers to fund stem cell research, also found that people in Britain, Australia, and New Zealand were in favor. Scientists believe the research on the master cells in embryos could lead to treatments for spinal injuries, strokes, and diseases like Alzheimer's. The, study, the survey found uh, 63%, 63% of the 501 Americans it interviewed approved of removing stem cells from human embryos to treat diseases and injuries, while 25% disapproved and 12% were undecided. And last but not least, what would an episode of Atheist Experience be without uh, some wacky hijinks from our pals, the Taliban? Oh, not again. Oh, yes, again. Now they, what? They just, as if Afghanistan weren't a depressing enough place to live in, these guys had to take over. Last week they banned games. What uh, did they ban this week? And the internet. Well, and the internet, Well, this right. is the most recent list that I've got. I don't know if, if it was all this week and some of it okay. was last week or weeks before, but yeah. among these things they have chess, lipstick, nail polish, neckties, playing cards, satellite dishes, VCRs, televisions, computers, cassette tapes, billiard tables, any item depicting a picture of a living thing, human or animal, <laughs> pig fat products, and anything made of human hair. <laughs> just, this is a government that's like actively trying to kill its population, you would say. That is just unbelievable. Bizarre. And Religion it, is so crazy. And you know, these, these prohibitions are coming in at such a fast and speedy pace. Oh. That's that easy, you know, you, we can make a game out of it, and in fact, I think we will. Yeah. Uh, we have, uh, starting this week, uh, our, and who knows how long we'll continue it, but yeah. do the Atheist Experience Taliban Raffle. This is where we want to try to get our viewers to call in the show at uh, 477-2288. Tell us what you think the Taliban is going to ban next. And Vic, let's have that list. Uh, we have <laughs> is it a, it's a multiple choice? Well, we have some suggestions here. Uh, so this is just uh, what do you think the Taliban will ban next? Here we go. Number one, matter. Uh, number two, solid food. Number three, children under the age of six. Number four, breathing while standing up. And number five, last but not least, going to the bathroom on odd-numbered days between the hours of 4 a.m. and 11 p.m. That gets my vote. Okay, now, of course, you don't have to strictly <laughs> use uh, those, um, you know, suggestions if you don't want to. I mean, you can make up some of your own. There, there is a, there's an other? Uh, well, like, write in, like a, yeah, a write-in? Yeah, give in your call. Call us up at that number. And, and, okay, Martin. <laughs> and, hey, if you're uh, if you're Speaking of which... There's then, our phone number. This is a live yeah. call-in show. And is it time for our live call-in segment? I couldn't hear if the music came up, by the way. So I We couldn't know. hear the music at the start of the show either. Maybe okay. it didn't go out. Did all right. it go out? Yeah, okay. during, during the list, good. Okay, okay fine. Um, all right, so that was it. You know, good some, grief, look at this. Line, yeah. The lines are, are, are lighting right up. Well, when we get on, names, so we'll, we'll get take the call. Um, but that's the news, yeah, pretty much. Let me do a quick thing. I had this uh, last week, and we didn't get to it. Um, oh, yeah. Have you ever heard of the Chronicles of Narnia? It's a, uh, it's a, it's a children's fantasy series written by C.S. Lewis. Yeah. Uh, well-known in, uh, Christian apologist. In the, in the 1950s, he wrote these things. A well-known Christian apologist. He's written a number of other books. Mm -hmm. I read these when I was a kid, yeah, and I was so appalled I. when I got to the final book of the series to discover that it was all an underhanded ploy to try to get me to be a Christian. <laughs> uh, the, the last book of the, ser of the series, he, he finally becomes overt in his proselytizing, destroying the land of Narnia so all the characters can die and go to heaven Narnia, uh -huh. which is, uh, you know... Uh, just like the regular Narnia, only nowhere near as fun. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, th at the time when I read these, I was 12, 13. Yeah. I was already a Christian, you know, and for, uh, for all intents and purposes, since uh, I had never really thought about it, and my parents took the, dragged me to church every week. But I was still appalled at the way that this guy would use this fantasy uh, series of books, theoretically for entertainment, to, uh, to slip his religious agenda in under the door. Well... 
Yeah, if he had openly marketed them as Christian fiction, that would be one thing. That would be one thing. Yeah. They were not more openly marketed as Christian fiction. Now, uh, interestingly, the, um, the series has been picked up by a new publisher, uh, which I'm not, not going to mention their name, but the new publisher has, uh, has signed a deal with, the, with the, uh, C.S. Lewis's estate to have new authors come in and write more Narnia books. Cool. And it came out in a memo, much like the, 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 uh, the memo that surfaced from, uh, from uh, the, uh, what is it, uh, uh, Salvation Army. Okay, yeah. Uh, there was a memo saying, um, let's see, uh, quote, Obviously, this is a biggie as far as the estate and our publishing interests are concerned, wrote an executive from this company. We'll need to be able to give emphatic assurances that no attempt will be made to correlate the stories to Christian imagery or theology. <laughs> so they want the new books not to have this, uh, this yeah. Christian propaganda in them. Yeah, they want just secular fantasy adventure. And of course, Christian fans of the series are... Yeah. Are exploding, any, but any, it's, any juice, any sniveling quote. It's interesting to note. No, I'm not going to get into that much oh, detail. Well. But uh, <laughs> it's interesting to quote to to note that they the licensor is the estate of C.S. Lewis, most notably one of his sons, who happens to be a minister mm -hmm. in Britain, who has no problem with this whatsoever. So he just it's doesn't just care. Lunatic. Uh, cool. Fan. Yeah. Well, let's just keep that in case we have questions. Well, that's neat. And mm. now let's go to calls. Why not? Yeah. Laura. Hello. Uh, let's try again. I am not getting the uh, thingy up. Yeah. It is not going on the air. Let's try line two. Line two. Uh, Patricia. Hello. Hi. Um, just, just, a, just a moment. Laura, if you're on the line, uh, we don't seem to be able to pick up. This might be Laura. Is this, this Laura? Is Laura? Yeah, this is Lorette. 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 Okay. Hi. We're sorry. Um, you're, you've got the line numbers wrong then. Okay. Because we're on line two now. We are. Or are we? We're on line one. Oh, we're on yeah, line, line one. Line one is Sorry, okay. we have to get ourselves over. Technical there. problems. I apologize. Hi, Lorette. What can we do for you? Yes. Um, I had happened. Actually, I had happened to, to, to pass you all turn it on the TV. Uh huh. Um, and you said something about the disciplining of children. Yeah. And um. I imagine you're against disciplining our, our children. No, we're against beating them. Okay, because I was going to say that I know that we're we're in a time now that you see some children are not being disciplined, and from the result of that, that you don't have parents that are consistent with um, letting their children know when you know when they're doing yeah, something. Yeah, no, no, we're, we're not against we're not against their being disciplined. We are against the kind of discipline that results in entire cults running away from Canada where they are facing child abuse charges, right? We're yeah. against that. We're against, uh, we're against uh, cult leaders here in the United States who, uh, who, uh, who uh, get brought up on child abuse charges for phoning in the number of times that, the, that a, a transgressing child is supposed to be beaten and having that number be like 140 times. Yeah. You know, there is a limit. Okay, well, I was going to say that. No, I don't believe in beating a child but you said something according to um, what the Bible says, yeah. not saying that you would uh, actually beat a child. Uh, well, that's what these people are saying. We're just reporting well, what they say. Okay, well, the, I know what the, the Word of God says, that, yes, you do discipline the child. And, and I know as growing up, my father and my mother whipped us with a belt, uh, a leather belt, uh -huh. and it done me, I mean, it did me good to this day. I'm not incarcerated nowhere. Um, now, neither are and, we. Okay. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean. Okay, and I'm saying here that, you know, the word of, what the word does is, you know, beat them with a rod because it will save that child from going down the wrong pathway, okay? And, and that's, no, well, I, you know, I know you have your, your what you want to say, but that's, that's go, it relates back to what the word of God says. And you got to obey what the word, because everyone has to go up under authority somewhere, not saying that you would miss treat a child and know not to beat them out of anger, okay? But then you mm -hmm. go back and you, you begin to tell that child, well, this is what, you know, I instructed you to do. And you show that child. And, yeah, okay, that, that's, that's all fine. Yeah. Okay, but, that's uh, what I... But I there want... are people in the world taking what the Bible says, beating kids and, uh, and going well, see, over the line into child abuse, okay? That's all we're talking about. 
Yeah, you can believe whatever you want about whatever crazy things the Bible says. That's all up to you. Well, see, we that's care. what I'm saying. Now, to you, for you, it's abnormal, okay? But the what your thoughts and your opinions about that, but that it all relates back to the God, to the Word of God. To, to, the, to the authorities in Canada, that, it's abnormal too. Apparently, they like chased well, out this entire cult. Apparently, if they went overboard, if mm -hmm. they went overboard, see, yeah, I'm well. not saying that you will hurt a child, and 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 God doesn't mean to hurt a child, but as first of all. He has a relate to where the way the people have to know you're going to do the way he says, not saying that you're going to hurt uh, I, anyone. We, look, look, man, we're atheists. We don't believe in any of that nonsense. Well, okay. you know, there is no you God. Know, it's I'm completely ridiculous. Here, yeah. okay, you well, can you're, believe whatever you want, but it's what, completely What I'm stupid. saying, sir, what yeah. I'm saying is that, you know, whether you believe it or not, there yeah. is a God, okay? No, so you, no, when, when no, you excuse leave this me. Earth, whether, let me there, tell you this, sir. There God, no, let me tell you this. If there is a God, then there's a God. Whether, when you if leave there isn't this God, earth, then sir, there isn't sir, a God. Sir, all I can pray is that God will just have mercy on you because, first of all, when you leave this earth, when the blood is out of your body, sir, you are going to spend eternal life somewhere, sir. And I just how hope do you know that? and pray to okay, God. Okay, how do you know that? How, how do you know, how do you know that there's anything after God. death? Because, just because he said so, sir. Just because just he said because so, the word you know that so. how? Because he said so. And, and how do you I know that? Is that I, you know, I just hope and pray that he how has, you know that he he has the mercy exists? on you all. All right, because thanks very much for the call, man. This is going nowhere. Thanks a lot. Please please keep watching the show. Yeah. Maybe you'll learn something. Yeah, um, when they start calling and delivering is that, sermons, is it really that gets static? Silent. We're getting over the speaker normal. Uh, it's just yeah, a little bit of fuzz, but uh, okay. Woo, uh, that was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, wait, but I, I wanted to ask her a question about how she felt about oh, this you particular can't now, thing. So let's go on to the next call. Okay. Sorry well, about that. Um, yeah, but uh, I'm trying to go to line two now. Uh, the button's a little messed up. Okay. He'll... Nick, go ahead, man. Okay. There we are. Hi, but, Patricia. Patricia. Patricia, you still there? Hello, line two. You're line on two, uh, Patricia. One last time, Patricia. I guess not. No, we don't got you. Let's try line three, Vic. Hello, Marlo. Hi. Hi, how you doing, man? How y'all doing? We're, we're doing? good. How are you, man? I'm all right. <laughs> yeah, this is my first time tuning in to, uh, to you guys' show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. What uh, can we do for you? And I was just watching uh, you guys uh, talk to Patricia and whatnot. You know what I mean? Uh, it was uh, Lorette. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I want to know, what makes you guys believe that there is no God? Because uh, we don't believe in anything that you can't prove is true. Right, exactly. It's, I mean, it's a, it's a good idea in general not right. to believe in stuff that uh, hasn't been proved. Right, but how do you, okay, if there's no, how did everything come into being then if there's no God? Don't know. The Big Bang Theory, huh? you guys believe in that? Well, that, right? that is the theory that best fits the available evidence. Okay, but there's no proof of that either. Well, there's well, very, is, very strong evidence. It is the it. best we're ever going to get. The yeah. closest we're ever going to get to knowing anything about anything is the best theory that fits the available evidence. But ever, no, ever. Yeah. There is no way to get better information than that. That is where information comes from. You look at the way things appear to be, uh -huh. and you try to draw the best conclusion you can. Right? You, That's you it. Like there doesn't get better than that. You, know, you seem to be very intelligent, and you, you should know that nothing from nothing equals nothing. So how could... Okay. I don't know that's I don't know that that's true when we're talking about the state of the universe. You so know, a god from it, nothing is still nothing, huh? Yeah, hang on, Vic. <laughs> yeah, I know. We'll handle the calls. Thank you, Mr. Producer. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it, we don't we we do not know that 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 you can't get nothing from nothing in you know, or whether that even makes any sense when we're talking about uh, completely different laws of physics that applied in you know the first few milliseconds of the universe. We don't know. We're working on it. Scientists are working on it. All right. And when we know, then we'll know. We don't know now. And making up a God to explain it doesn't solve anything, right? It's a made-up answer. If you can prove that that answer is true, that's different, right? But it hasn't been proved to be the actual answer. Yeah, well, so I what do good agree is it? with you guys on the, the child abuse situation. I do agree with you guys on okay. that one. Yeah. It's, and we're not saying that all Christians do that, but we are saying that when child abuse occurs you find this disturbingly disproportionate number of people using Scripture to justify it. And we don't think, uh, I mean, it's wrong enough as it is, and that just seems to make it wronger. No, but you guys do believe in discipline, though, right? Yeah, but I, if I were a parent, I would try to lead by example. You know, I would want to be a good parent and just have my child follow my example and, and become a good person that way, not by just always smacking him around every time he made me upset. No, not smacking him around, but, you yeah. know, every, a child needs a whooping every now and then, you know what I mean? Well, uh, it, uh, neither of us are... Are your parents? 
I'm not a parent, no. Okay. Did, did I, mean, I just want to make sure. We're not parents. Did. We're not the right people to ask. But all we're telling, we're reporting the news, okay? Yeah. The news is there was this Christian cult in Canada. Uh -huh. They were beating their kids. When the Canadian government, government came for them and said, you guys are abusing your children, they fled. Okay? Mean, That's like, all we're reporting. Like, what, punching them in the face? What did it, what uh, did it they say? Were, uh, uh, sticks and, sticks they and were leather using, straps. Yeah, using straps and um, rods, actually, yeah. as that was described. Oh, that is horrible. Yeah, yeah there you go. But uh, one more thing before I just go, man, I just want to let you know, you know, I don't, I just don't understand how atheists believe that there's no such thing as a god upstairs, man. Well, why do you believe that there are aliens living on the moon? No. Nah, why not? Really. Have you proved that there aren't? The Bible doesn't say anything about Forget aliens. Forget the Bible. It has what is the evidence that there are not aliens living on the backside of the moon? Where we can't we've see We've been to the moon. Yeah. Mankind has Not... been to the moon plenty of times, so I think we would have seen Okay, them. They're, they are in underground cities. My point is, <laughs> my point is, it makes no sense to believe stuff just because it hasn't been proven to be false. Okay? The time to believe a thing is when it has been proved to be true, or when it is the best explanation that is available. And I'm afraid God just isn't. God does not explain what we see. God is a made-up answer that stops the questioning, okay? What scientists are trying to do is look at the actual evidence and come up with the best explanation that they can that fits the evidence they've got. That's it. It doesn't get better That's than that. That's the whole problem, I'm sorry, man. but it doesn't. Mankind is uh, convinced of its own superiority, you know? It, Over what? Over what? Over yeah. the earth, you know? We don't have the answers to everything, man. Well, of course we don't. That's why we keep searching and looking and, and studying evidence. Okay, but well, what are you guys going to do when you pass on and then, you well, know? Well, we'll be dead. Yeah. Huh? And we'll be, be dead, dead and it'll okay, be over. no, but what if you guys pass on and you end up going to hell? I bet you're going to uh, look back and say, well, hell, you know, I should have. Well, what? And I'll be sitting there going, what a creepy God we had who, who, who rather than making his existence blatantly obvious so I'd notice it, okay, hid himself so that being rational and looking around at what the evidence was and, and deciding what was worth believing based on that evidence, I wound up not believing in him, okay? You're, if, if God exists, he's tricking me into going to hell, okay? Because I'm just trying to make the best decisions I can based on the evidence as, I, as, as it appears. Right. All the evidence is in the Bible, man. What? No, no, what sorry, happened? dude. Yeah, that's... Uh, Anybody can write a book. Yeah. Any bunch of crazy, uh, uh, you know, uh, heat stroke cultists in the Middle East can write the books. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, there's mean ev anything. Every, there are 2,000 religions active in the world today. Every single one of them has their holy text that they say contains the evidence for everything around that you could possibly want to know about anything. Yeah. What you know, matters is what the evidence actually yeah. is. I mean, but words in a Bible are not evidence. Words in a Bible are claims. Okay. Then you take those claims and you compare them against what the evidence actually is. And the evidence actually is that it's all made up. There is no evidence to that. You know, the science, you're going to believe a little scientist who, uh, the, they say the Earth was formed billions of years ago uh -huh. by uh -huh. some cloud of dust exploding out of thin air. And what, what evidence does he have to back that up? It's called physics. Physics. Yeah. It's, uh -huh. it's, it's, it's yeah. Any There's physician a, knows nothing. Uh, you can't create nothing out of nothing, uh, you know? Uh, Marlo, okay, wait. Uh, Marlo, you physician, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm no, go ahead. Not. Go ahead and take it. So first off, physicians don't deal with physics. So those are, that would be physicists. But <laughs> well, you know what I mean, man. The, the, fact, of the, the fact of the matter is that if you look, it, 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 you have to be objective about these things. All right. And, and well, you don't you, have to. Well, you can, you can well, be not objective, and you can just believe any old nonsense you want to. Uh, but I mean, you. You know, the, the, but what, if you want to make sense, the reason, you ought to be objective. The, the reason that we don't agree with your position is simply because we try to look at what the available evidence shows, and if the available evidence points away from what the religious claims happen to be, we're just not exercising a bias that is making us say, well, I don't like that. I'm going to go ahead and believe in, in these religious claims anyway. Yeah. You know, it, look, everything could be turned upside down tomorrow and, and a group of physicists or scientists or astronomers or biologists could get on there and have this big TV press conference and say, hey, we've been studying evidence more and more and more and we've found out we're all wrong and it turns out that these religious claims are all true after all. That could happen, you know, but yeah. it would, it, but, you and know. if it does, we'd, well, you know, it does, then we'd believe it. Yeah, I'm not sure, I, it's, I'm still not sure I'd sign up for, yeah. say, Christianity given what the Bible has to say about the behavior of that particular God. But, uh, but sure, it could all be proved true. Until it is, we're not going to believe it. It seems pretty reasonable to us. 
Uh, also, also getting back to what you said about yeah. physicians knowing that you don't get something from nothing. Uh, physicists, of course, is what we're talking about. Uh, uh, if something doesn't come from nothing, that applies to gods, too. Okay, where'd your god come from? Uh, you can ask him after you pass on. And there you go. You, you did yeah. what you did. That's just you said, answer. Well, there's this rule that says you can't get something from nothing, and therefore it had to come from God, right? But you're not. But you're cheating, and you're not applying that same okay, rule to your god. Okay, but think about it. Okay, think about it. Billions of years ago, right? Yeah. There was nothing but darkness, right? And all of a sudden, a cloud appears out of nowhere and explodes, and now we have all kind of yeah, technology. Actually, and stuff actually, now. actually, that's. I mean. Um, there, are, there are quantum fluctuations going on all the time, all through space, and it's not, it, it is not a big violation of known physics for a universe to pop into existence. It's just not. Okay, well, God, Sorry, man. Yeah. Well, it was nice talking to y'all. Okay, yeah, you nice too. talking to you, too. You take Good care. Luck. Good for luck being, with you guys. Show, thanks for right? being easier to talk to than the last lady. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. You guys take it easy. Have a nice week. All right, yeah, thanks take a lot. Care. All right. And, uh, um, there, and there's a website. And keep watching the show. Well, we're here every week. I uh, sure will. Man. Yeah. Okay, bye-bye. There's a website. What line were we on? That was three. three. There's a okay, website, and I, I don't know the um, the address to the website, but it's called Ask the Astronomer. And uh, on that question is an astronomer, and he has over 3,000 questions that he's been getting for like the last 15 years, and he has answers to all of them up on this webpage. And there is a particular section that you can click on where it says uh, Big Bang Cosmology, cosmology being the study of the origins of the universe. And um, there is a question uh, very similar to what uh, we just heard was, you know, someone said, well, do you believe in the Big Bang or do you believe in creation? And uh, this astronomer goes on at length first to explain how the processes of science don't require a person to believe anything. You look at what the evidence has to show about a certain claim. If the evidence doesn't back up the claim, you ditch it. You ditch the claim. Right. If the evidence does back up the claim, then you say, ah, oh, well, this claim is starting to look pretty solid. Let's, let's investigate it more. And you just go from there. Science isn't this... It's not. It's not this. It's not like religion. religion. You get on to go down to a building and sing songs, and somebody, yeah. and somebody preaches at you to and get someone, you to believe in science. Yeah. And it someone hands and way. someone hands you a book and says, "This is how everything works," and and believe this yeah. and don't ask Unfortunately, questions. Unfortunately, the way science is presented in our public schools, it does. Yeah. It, it does kind of come across like revealed truth, and that's yeah. just not. Which that's, is, yeah. and that's unfortunate. Yeah. But um, it's not. But, it, but it's it's all a process. Hey, we could be completely wrong, but until we get to some evidence uh, feeding us back that direction, yeah. you know. Yeah. You know, Let's go to the next call. Uh, I guess Who that is would it? Be... Would that be line one? Rob. On Rob. Yeah. Hi, Rob. Uh, what can you do hi. for you, man? You're on the air. Listen, you know, I'm an atheist, but I don't think you guys are doing a great job of representing the community. Okay. Um, what, what I think you're kind of condescending and rude to people who aren't as well educated as you are. And I think you're humorous and, and serious at the wrong times about the wrong subjects. Okay. And kind of overall dissatisfied with the way you present the okay. subject. Okay. All right. We hear you. Um, and and also, your physics that. isn't very good. The fact is, we really don't know what caused the Big Bang. There's well, not yeah, theories, but they're real. Yeah, we, yeah I, 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 I don't think we made that claim. If we made that, if we no, made you said there was a good reason to expect that something could come from nothing. And the fact is, no, nobody really knows that. There's there's a couple of theories, but they're real half baked at this point. Right. And so, okay, you know, that's still an open subject. For example, and thank you. And yeah, thank I you think for the correction. We're not scientists. We're just a couple of morons on TV. Well, I'm not a scientist either. But you, but the thing is, the the deal is. If you want to convince people, yeah. you're trying to convince people, right? And so that yeah. means you've got to I'm be not. with no, them. No, actually, you know? no. This show is not here for the sake of turning people into, athe into atheists. It's not. It's not our point. Well, then I don't quite get your point. The point is that we want to explain, we want to present the atheist viewpoint on various issues, particularly yeah. concerning religion, um, and we also want to uh, pretty much uh, flush people out, people who are unbelievers, and let them know that there's an atheist community yeah, and in the general. Well, there should there's there's an atheist there, viewpoint on many things, really, or there should be. My, but, my no. parents, let me, tell, let me tell you my story, okay? My parents are both ministers, and they've got this huge library of religious books about everything you can think of. And they've got books on Hinduism and Islam and all kinds of other things, you know, probably biased from the Christian perspective. But, they, but they, at least they have books on it, right? they got nothing on atheism. They have no idea what atheism is. They haven't a clue. Atheism I'd be is hard presented to, name to a the great work of atheist literature, actually. Pardon me? I'd be hard-pressed to name a great work of atheist literature, actually. Oh, well, but there are at least some works that are pretty that Maybe are pretty Carl decent. Sagan or somebody, I don't know. Uh, well, there's Douglas Kruger's book, What is Atheism? Uh, yeah, there's George uh, there's, Smith. George Smith has written a couple of books. Uh, there are books out there. And, and But the point is that the general public hasn't a clue 
what atheists are. I mean, they think an atheist is just somebody who doesn't think about God at all. And in fact, atheism has a history. It has a philosophical basis, right? I mean, it's got its own point well, of view and its my, own my argument. Point is, my point is that, from and that's watching what we're your here. Show, that's what we're the, here to share with people. My my point is that from watching your show, I would uh -huh. get the feeling that atheists are arrogant know-it-alls. Yeah. Well, um, hmm. you know, I don't know how you're getting that when we freely admit that we don't know things that we don't know. Well, but like the way you were taking science to that guy that called last, I don't think that was the right way to debate that with him. You know, I mean, he may he probably was. You know, out of his element there, clearly. Well, I'm, well, I'm sure. I'm and sure he was. Yeah, but I, I thought what we were trying to do was explain very carefully the difference between looking at what evidence shows about a particular claim and simply believing and... and yeah, but and I think what you got to use is more down-to-earth. Uh, you were headed the right way with your are there aliens on the moon mm -hmm. business. That was the right kind of thing because that was a down-to-earth kind of... Okay. Well, that's not yeah, the right again? Word, but it was a palatable right. example that people yeah. could understand. But actually, you gave the wrong answer. The fact is, we don't really know. We think probably there's not, but actually, and, we don't know because we haven't really and when looked. When there isn't evidence for something, the sensible thing to do is refrain from believing that. Thing. Exactly. Yeah. And so point. you shouldn't believe there's not aliens on the moon either. Actually, the fact is, we well, sure. think probably yeah. not, but we don't really know because we haven't been there. Yeah. Well, well, the overall point that that Jeff was trying to make was that without evidence, uh, strong evidence uh, to support a claim, there's no real reason to simply resort to belief. Yeah. Uh, in, in the claim, maybe because the belief in it makes you happy or gives you some sense of, well, this yes, is what... Yes, but I, and I also think that to some degree, atheists tend to go overboard in that direction and believe in things not being there without evidence, just as well as they believe in not believing things are there with evidence, without evidence. Well... Yeah. Anyway, no, 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 I, just don't, I just don't approach life from the standpoint of belief and non-belief. I approach it from what makes sense to... Uh, to accept and what do, it doesn't make sense to accept. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's it. Uh, anyway, thanks very much for your input. We we do take that seriously. All right. Keep watching. Is this the first time you've watched the show? Oh, I've caught you three or four times. Okay. Yeah. Uh, My wife you, watches you and screams at the TV a lot. Does she? <laughs> yeah, the she's thing about the thing about doing live television. at us or at our callers. <laughs> All right. Well, the thing, of, the thing about live television is you never really know how it's going to go, uh, you know, from show to show, and it can be very different. And we've had shows that are. Humorous and laid back, and we've had shows that are really heated and boisterous, and and it, it all tends to it it all depends on like, on what you get. Yeah, well, tonight when you go home, pull out the tape of this show and look at your reading about the cult in Canada. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know when you first were reporting that. Yeah. And notice that you were joking about it. And yeah. To me, that's and not, well, I don't think that's appropriate at all. Well, we weren't joking about the children. Right, being, we weren't joking about the children being beaten. What we were joking about was um, this perverse attitude where people actually can justify what? and indeed express some deal of enthusiasm towards uh, child abuse. But, but the way it came off was glee that these ignorant uh, religionists would do such a terrible thing. No, that's the way it came not, off. No, that well, that's not what headed. we meant. So I, I don't. Sorry if you interpreted. All right, that, dude. Thanks, thanks, thanks very much for calling. Bye. And we'll talk to you later. Bye bye. Yeah, uh, that was um that was, that was uh, line Rob one. on line one. Yeah. Okay, let's That's, go to Lee on line two. That certainly wasn't the intention. Lee, uh, yes, you guys. line two. Hello. Uh, hello, hi, Lee. you're on the air. Hey, how's it going there? Um, I have so much to say to you all. I've, I've been right. watching your show for like the longest. Yeah. And yeah, let me see. Let me start off with churches and things like that. Okay. People, ch church is nothing more. Religion is nothing more than it's like it's a scare tactic. If 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 you don't feel if you don't feel what everyone else is feeling, or 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 if you even even dare to think that there isn't a God, you're told that you're doomed to hell. And because yeah. you're told those things, people people go to church not because they believe in this God, because they're because they're a lot of them are just scared. They're scared that if they don't live the life that these people are saying they should live, that they were they're destined to go to hell and burn for all eternity. But there's no proof for any of it. Okay. And I yeah. want to go back to what the last caller said about the um, by existence. You have to think about it. Use your common sense, people. If if there can be a God without a God creating Him, then why can't there be us without a God creating us? It's common sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's yeah. It's, it's, it's it's interesting to to note how many Christians are resistant to the idea of some sort of form of matter or the universe in some form having always existed. They, just, they seem to think that that's an, an abject impossibility. But yeah. they have no problem with this idea that there's this being, uh, an actual sentient uh, thinking being uh, with amazing powers uh, that has always existed uh, and that just decided one day to create a universe. Yeah, God is the big you know, blanket answer to everything that breaks all the rules. 
No, don't, that, don't, that, don't, that, don't dare go against them. Don't, mm-hmm. don't dare say that you don't believe in God. You can't. What politician did you know is an atheist or something like that? They all have to, they all have to put on this role yeah. and try to just live their life just to make it in life. They have to. You can't do anything without Actually, saying that you're a religion. There was a mayor in California in the late 1800s. I have heard who was openly atheist, but but <laughs> they're few and far they're few and far between. Yeah, so that's a long uh, time ago. The late 1800s. Yeah, I know, and it just it just astounds us that you know mm-hmm. we make up according to a recent poll. Uh, uh, people without religion make up about 13% of the American population, and yet you never hear from us in the media, right? Yeah, it's always some the creature up there telling you, you know, this about stem cells, that about cloning, blah de blah blah Bible says this, Bible says that. Uh, it, we, we, have, we have opinions about stuff, too. Yeah. And, Can we and, please be noticed? And, and all that it means to be an atheist is that you're a person who just lives your life without uh, supernatural or religious beliefs. That's all it means. I don't necessarily say that I'm not. I'm not necessarily saying that I'm an atheist. I'm mm-hmm. not necessarily saying that there's no God. I'm just saying that this individual does exist. He he hasn't showed me any evidence at all. He's never spoke to me. I never felt right. anything. Right. And the people in church, I don't really think they feel anything either. I think they just think they feel that because uh, everyone else uh, no, is no, suggesting no, that they do it. No, there are there is documented evidence of uh, of neurological features of the brain that give people those kinds of sensations. Okay. That, that has, in fact, been established. I think the problem is that people are having these sensations and attributing it to a god when, in fact, they don't really know what it is. I think that's the problem. Correct. So. Oh, well, well, anyway, thanks very much for your call. Yeah, I mm-hmm. appreciate hearing from you. Uh, we're here every week. Okay, I watch. Okay. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. That was line two. Yeah, go to line three. three. Yeah, line three, we're just going to keep them going. Yeah. Shay. Shay, you there? Yeah, um, I'm sorry, my phone's about to die, so i got to make this quick. Okay, okay that's fine. Um, y'all have to have proof for everything, and you said that if you go to hell, that God tricked you into going to hell. Oh, yeah. Well, I believe that, you know, there's a heaven and a hell, and if, and if there was physical proof, and God came down, like, every Sunday and spoke to us, yeah. wouldn't everybody follow him? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what faith is. Well, no, no, you not have necessarily. to have faith. Uh, but, well, wait, wait, wait a second. Okay. Hang on, okay. Wait, no, let, me, let me take this one. Okay. Um, okay. Not everybody would follow him. In fact, frankly, me, personally, based on what I've read of that particular God in the Bible, I wouldn't follow him, okay? No. So, okay. Um, I mean, a guy who, knowing, because he's omniscient, right, and he knows everything, knowing that Eve is going to eat the apple, right, and then punish, and then creating her anyway, exactly that, that, the way that she was, so that she would do that, and then punishing her, for doing only exactly what he knew already that she would do when he created her but that is was just, just not fair. It's just not fair. You don't create, like, you know, a robot dog to pee on the carpet and then punish the robot dog when it pees on the carpet. It's ridiculous. It's not, it's not fair. But if and, he would have made everything without temptation... Everyone would go, if there's not temptation, everybody would go to heaven. I mean, there oh, has well, to be... Oh, well, and, 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 and what would be so bad about that? Yeah. Why didn't he just create a heaven and put a bunch of, of, of nice because people in there to hang out with? there's an evil force also in, what? you know... Pardon? I'm there's sorry? There's an evil force also. There's God and there's... Why is there an evil force? How can we, that be? Isn't this God y'all omnipotent? Don't believe in, I mean, even if you look well, at... Well, isn't this God omnipotent? What is that? I don't, I don't get it. I yeah. do not I understand how an omnipotent God can enemy. have an opposing evil force that could possibly do anything that God didn't want him to do. Yeah. In fact, mm. as a matter of fact, if you read the Bible and you look at the number of times that Satan ever, or, or Lucifer, or whatever name they give him in that particular chapter, ever hurt anybody in the Bible, okay, it's uh, Job and his family, and then only because God tells Satan it's okay to go ahead and do it. And contrast this with, like, God wiping out the entire population of the earth with the flood, okay? (laughs) God could have waved his hands, turned all those people into nice people, problem solved. Nope, I think we'll drown them. It it doesn't make any kind of sense. I would never worship a God that behaved like that. Now, of course, being omnipotent, he would throw me in hell forever, right? And I'd be down there going, man, what, a, what an unfair creep. Yeah. All righty, well, it's good talking to y'all. Thanks a lot. All right, okay. thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Well, thanks. okay, what do we got? Back to line one, Tim. Hey, Tim? Jeff. 
Hi, Tim. It's your old buddy, Tim. Oh, that Tim. Long time ago. Just Heard from Nostradamus lately, have you? Oh, well, I just moved back to Austin. Where's Ray at? Uh, yeah. Ray is, uh, is uh, one of the elected co-chairs of our group now, and, uh, and uh, not on the TV show. Well, that's sad. Group anymore. It was a good addition to your show. So. Well, he moved on. He had other things that he wanted to do. And you guys still have the best show. I've been here for a week now. Uh, access has still got you guys at the top of my list. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm right. Just, uh, I've learned a lot of stuff since we used to haggle back in the old days. Uh-huh. And I um, just want to let you know my prophetic, you know, tendencies, you know, anything y'all need on that, I'm always here for your reference. <laughs> okay? <laughs> we're, we're, not, we're not going out of our way looking for that stuff, man, but if... If you insist that you want to take that seriously and you want to present it to us, we will respond. Well, the prophecy... And just the way it's always been. It's, it's the most interesting part of the Bible to me. And what what part is that? Well, Daniel, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Revelation, and all that good stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. But as far as the stuff you were talking about here uh-huh. with the Old, Old Testament stuff, yeah. um, I think Christians really need to do a little more research on where those stories originally come from. Um, they weren't originally pinned by Hebrews. Um, they go they go way back, even before, you know, Abraham and Moses and all them. You can find these well, creation bit, stories with the exact same thing. Bit, bits of it does seem to have been cribbed from older mythologies. That's correct, no, but not no. all of it. Not well, all of it. Yeah, I mean, the flood myth came from uh, the, the Babylonians. Uh, the whole Jesus story was uh, was cribbed from the uh, religion of Mithras, that was uh, very active at the time that Jesus is said to have lived. So yeah, I mean, there's um, you know, Christianity has borrowed liberally and and uh, and unapologetically, and and will probably continue to do so. It's very it's a very adaptive religion. That's probably why it has survived all these years. Well, most that and a powerful church. Well, most people credit Moses with writing the first five books. Yeah, yeah but yeah, uh, no. but act, but actual <laughs> biblical scholars do not. Right. There are there are thought to have been at least as many as four writers for the Pentateuch. Um, there's a, a very informative book called Who Wrote the Bible by J. Uh, J. Friedman. That's right. Uh, which uh, which um, gives some of the latest scholarship, uh, particularly on the um, documentary hypothesis, I believe it's called, where you can identify the two different writing styles that are evident in, um, in Genesis and Exodus. And then I believe uh, as you get into Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and Numbers... Well, there's, it, it's, it's more than that. I mean, yeah. there are two accounts of the creation in Genesis. Right. right? It goes through it all once, Mm-hmm. And then it goes through it all again, and they're they're slightly different, right? Yeah. And there are there's different terminology used, different words used. Like there's there's different names given to God in the two different places. And yeah. what appears to have happened is historically well, Israel three. split. Pardon? Actually, three. Um, there's well, the Yahweh version, the Elohim version. There you the, go. Okay, yeah. so you know all this and, and stuff. The Jehovah Jehovah version. But yeah. there, there was a time when Israel was actually split into two different nations. There was Israel and Judah. And the priesthoods of the two different regions appear to have written down their stories, oral tradition, their oral tradition separately. And then when they united, what appears to have happened is somebody cut and pasted the two things together rather than offend either priesthood. Well, the main reason they did that is because the priest, one of the commandments was not to use the name in vain, whichever name you pick. And so they actually took the name Yahweh out of the Bible so that people wouldn't say it and wouldn't even know it. And it was only said on... Yeah, uh, well. feast mm-hmm. or one of those feast days. Right. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, besides that, that's getting off on a tangent too. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad to have you guys back. Well, um, thanks, Tim. I look right. forward thanks to so to calling in frequently. Thanks for watching. Okay. Thanks Later for guys. following us to this new time slot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you used to be Tim. Uh, yeah, Tim. <laughs> All right, see you. Okay, bye bye. All right, man. Take care. That was Tim on line one. Let's go to Jacob on line two. Jacob. Jacob, yeah. you there? Yeah. Hi. Hi. You're on the air. Thanks for waiting. What's up, cool. Jacob? Um, actually, just a couple of things. Okay. Um, I am Catholic. Okay. Um, I was born Catholic, but, um, so, you know, I, I, I do believe in God and so forth. Okay. But, a uh, couple of little things. Um, I think it's funny that there's a God that would create a bunch of people just to worship him. Yeah. Seems um, kind of weird, huh? It, interesting. But, uh, I actually wanted to know your position on, um, separation of church, of church and state and the Bible in the courtroom. Uh, Separ- and, separate? Oh, you mean like swearing on the Bible? Yeah, so using okay. using the Bible as you know uh, the, the basis the, of truth or, or whatnot, the, the, um, and that's that's pretty much all. I just kind of wanted to throw that out there. Okay. okay. Well, well, are you going to want to respond to this, or should we hang yeah, up? Yeah, no, I just, just wanted to hear what you guys have to say. About okay. It. Okay. Sure. Thanks, Thanks for uh, uh, we can hang up a line too then, Vic. And Thanks. we'll um, just hold for. Okay. The founding fathers of our nation were predominantly deists. 
deists are guys who believe in a god, but they're not Christians. Mm -hmm. they, they, uh, it, you can read the writings of Jefferson and Adams on these subjects. Got them uh, here. In fact, you got some there? Yeah. Um, here. Let's have a quick um, Jefferson quote. Well, here's a, here's a letter from uh, Jefferson to a reverend Mr. Miller. Oh, that's uh, too long. Find uh, a short one. Well, well okay. Anyway. Okay, anyway, well, he just says, everyone must act according to the dictates of his own reason, and mine tells me that civil powers alone have been given to the President of the United States and no authority to direct the religious exercises yeah. of his constituents. Yeah. Um, so, so, uh, the, uh, that, so these deists put together a constitution that, is, that mentions God occasionally, but in a deistic sense, not in a mm -hmm. Christian sense. They did not mean specifically Jesus' dad. Mm -hmm. And and they erected what was what uh, became to later be called the wall of separation between church and state. The basic idea is the government has to keep its tentacles out of religious matters completely. It cannot be involved in doing religious stuff. Now there has been a slow erosion of this ever since, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we now have uh, very quickly and within within a, within a couple of decades, we had preachers. Uh, speaking at the opening of this, the uh, the Senate and House sessions, right? right? Yeah, uh, and yeah. that and you can find letters from the founding fathers saying, "Hey, you know, we really shouldn't be doing that. That violates <laughs> the separation of church and state, uh, and and all kinds of stuff like that." But the point of that is, they saw what happened in Europe mm -hmm. when the church and the state get together you have problems, right? Yeah. And we can see this today looking at places like Afghanistan, uh -huh. where every week we're telling you the crazy stuff the Taliban is doing, right? The Taliban, Taliban is a government that is also the religion. Yeah. And so the laws, rather than being there for the sake of keeping the peace, right, and making things fair for everyone, laws are, in a theocracy, there for the purpose of enforcing religious teachings. That's a whole different can of worms. Um, so that's to, so the separation of church and state. We're all for it. Yeah. Right? We do what we can. Uh, I, in fact, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was in Washington D.C. with other representatives from atheist groups around the country, do, at a press conference uh, against the Bush administration's faith-based initiative, and uh, we'll be talking more about that. I think yeah. if it gets to the Senate. What was the other question? Was uh, um, the swearing on the Bible? In swearing the on the Bible. I didn't Again, have to do that. It's a it uh, yeah. in most. I think in most places now, if you say you just want to give an affirmation, you just want to promise yeah. that you're not going to lie, they'll accept that. But yeah. really, that shouldn't be the default. It's yeah, well, just wrong. Well, when I did jury duty wrong. just over a year ago, we got the secular oath yeah. as a divine. You know, I didn't even have to mention That's it. good. Yeah, so That's that, that was in favor of that. That was very refreshing because I was a little nervous about having to go, uh, Your Honor, uh, and, and interrupt yeah. them, So yeah. Anyway, I think Nancy on three. I Nancy on three. We have time. We got Nancy? Nancy? Are you there? Hello, Hello Nancy. Hello, Nancy. I guess she let us go. Okay, let's go to line one. Mike. Hi, guys. How you we doing? Al we also have a mic on line two, so if you're there on line two listening, don't go nuts. Okay. Hi, Mike. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah we can Mike. hear you. You're on the air. How you doing? Mike, I just want to say I disagree with Ron. I think you guys are doing a great job. Yeah. Uh, I think you have a lot more patience than I would with some of these callers, so... Mm. Keep it up. I don't know if Ron's been watching you a long time. I've been watching you for quite a well, while. No, we, we, take, we take comments like Ron seriously, but then we also take the implications for our society of these kinds of beliefs seriously, yep. right? Yeah. You know, we look at, at what is happening now with that erosion of the wall of separation between church and state, right? Bush wants to give money to all these churches to do church things. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's and our tax dollars. Why should it, you know, and, and uh, uh, forget whether an atheist ought to be funding, say, Baptist yeah. missionaries yeah. <laughs> trying to turn people into Baptists. Should a Catholic have to get have his tax dollars spent to have Baptists try to come and convert the Catholics' children or neighbors or friends into Baptists. Yeah. It's a whole area we should not yeah. be getting into, and and it's it's getting out of hand, yeah. and so we get a little heated. Yeah, yeah. and in, and in defense of today's program, I have to say, I think the only call we've had that did get. The, the first caller, the, the, the lady whose name I've already forgotten, she was threatened, she was threatened yeah, us with well, hell and it was, stuff. No, it, was, it, her, no, it wasn't a... We, we are here to exchange in a dialogue with callers, and we enjoy doing that. But yeah. some of our callers insist upon calling up and delivering 
sermons, yeah. as if we were in a church and they were behind a pulpit lecturing us. That's not what we're here to hear. Yeah. You know, we're not interested in that, and when you start to just preach and preach and talk over us and it turns into a shouting match, yeah. there's yeah. no point. we just got to hang up and let you go, yeah. and we don't think we're the rude party there. Yeah. You know? I think, you know, for Lorette talking about uh, disciplining kids in the that Bible, it, yeah, Lorette. I, mean, I think, Martin, you're getting ready to point out that the Bible says if your kids talk back to you or curse you, you're supposed to kill them. Well, I, yeah, I, as a matter very, of fact, there are places in the Bible that say that. That's very the Old Testament, and therefore they can say so, the Old yeah, you Testament, get out of the Old Testament free card. Yeah, this, right. is, this is the, uh, you must uh, have uh, seen me uh, turning <laughs> to uh, Leviticus chapter 20, yeah. uh, verse 9. If yeah. anyone curses his father or mother, he must be put to death. He yeah. has cursed his father or his mother, and his blood will be on his own head. Yeah, so I mean, if, that's, if that's what the Word of God says... Yeah. You know, so these people, I mean, I, I like to use the Bible against them. When they say well, the Bible says we should discipline kids, I say, well, if the Bible says you should kill them if they curse you, too. And, you know, right. I mean, that's the whole point is I think you just can't take what they say and put up with it sometimes. You have to argue with them, and sometimes it does get heated. We need the Bible with a bunch of garbage, and that's basically yeah. all I've got to say. Well, thanks. Okay, Keep thanks up the good job. All right. Thanks Bye. a lot. Thank you, Mike. Hey, we're, so we're, Mike le line one. we're learning, too. Yeah, you know, this is this is. Uh, uh, I mean, we're not professionals. <laughs> yeah, we're just people who have convictions. Let's go to Mike on two. Hey, you guys. Hello, other Mike. How other can we Mike. do for you. How are you? Uh, I just turned on in the middle of your show, and you you were discussing, I guess, the Big Bang Theory, and I was wondering. That made me start to wonder what what you guys. Uh, I've always wondered uh, the people that believe. I'm a I'm a Christian. I'm a believer, and I just wanted to know your point of view as as far. I've always wondered the Big Bang Theory. Now, do you think? Like, we're all made up of the same... Like, I'm looking at my television. Am uh -huh. I the same... I mean, could that be my cousin? Are we made up of the yeah. same material? I mean, uh, as, just in your point of view, that's all I, I need to... Well, we are made out of molecules. I don't think that... Well, no, 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 no. See, I don't want you to interrupt me and smart off. I just no, we're not trying to interrupt no, you and no, smart no, off. I thought okay. you were done. I was answering your question. I, I mean, the Big Bang Theory, we started from... It was all one speck, and then there was, the, well, the Big Bang. And then here we are. I guess we've evolved since then, so... I mean, are you saying my great great grandfather could have been like an amoeba, or what? What, what do you? I don't understand. I'm saying you. if you trace trace your ancestry back far enough, you're going to get to go through simpler and simpler, more and more primitive organisms until you get to the earliest life forms that there were. Yeah. There's Sorry. a there's a terrific website called um, uh, talkorigins.org. In fact, so, Vic, why don't you kick the websites up? And this this is a specific website that deals with. Uh, the, the creation evolution uh, um, topic, the whole that whole debate. Yeah, that would be the uh, so you guys second think that down. If I go back far enough, that uh, it would well, stop being human, and you know, would it be a monkey? Or well, again, I again, well, here, here, yeah, here are yeah, the, apparently uh, that is apparently the way it worked. Yeah. Well, but here, here are the uh, uh, just because we're out of time, we we don't have much time. What I'm going to suggest is the top two websites on this list are really informative. They deal with those subjects, and you can get info. We're not biologists, we're not scientists, we're not cosmologists, but the people who write the uh, essays and the articles on these sites are, and they have a greater degree of expertise than we do, and, and they probably would explain it a lot more understandably than we could. Okay, guys. Thanks and, for your time. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks Bye -bye. a lot. Uh, no, what shall we do? It? We're down to two minutes. Let, uh, let's see if Dwayne can ask us something quick in two minutes. On line three. Yeah, why not? Dwayne? Dwayne on... Dwayne on Dwayne? Hi. Something just quick. We're down to two minutes. Okay, I was just saying. Uh, the Constitution is no separation of uh, church and state. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Where? What's the name of it? Article one. Uh, uh, no, the uh, the Amendment one, where uh, the uh, uh, co Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. But there's no separation of church and state. It just says there won't be a state religion. That's right. No. Right. If, no. no. That's no. what it means. It's very no. clear in later in later commentary written by the framers of the Constitution. But if it's that not, they, but the, if the, it's the, not the in the phrase, Constitution, hang, hang on a second, the excuse me, sir. The they, these are the guys that wrote it, explaining yeah. what they meant. Okay? But if it's not in the Constitution, actually these are the guys the who wrote it, explaining what they meant. You don't care what they meant. No. What you I'm want to take is, the wording. You want to go by the word of what they wrote. And, and interpret that for your own purposes no, rather saying, than pay attention to what they meant. No, what I'm saying is is that there's no separation of church and state given in any kind of detail in the Constitution. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. You need most to get a copy of it and read it. No, it's not. We you're read not it got a degree you degree from UT in government and history, and you're going to tell me, dude, we read that for four years in school. They don't have any. It's basically on decisions made in the 20th century. Look, take it up with the Supreme Court, yeah. dude. I know, we're down to 30 seconds. But it's not in the Constitution. Thanks very much for your call.
Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, also I guess we're we're done. Article eight uh, lists specifically lists the powers of government, and, 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 and there's no power for the government to do anything religious whatsoever. So it's there, like it or there not. There is a wall of separation, but it's not called that. It was called that later. Yeah. It is. It is uh, so anyway, Christians. <laughs> bye bye. All right, that's the end of that. Well, you got I cut off. Who the Freedom Report is? So. Oh, awkward, cr clumsy show. Oh well. Yeah, it's okay. It was just. Okay. Phew. Yeah, when the first, I guess the team did show is it. Star Wars, I don't really know. What was it about the Big Bang? Yeah. They just have these sort of comical, simplistic ideas of them. That's what they dismiss it of. It's just missing it of. You know, I think that's the way it is. But it's something to work on this. Okay, then. Right. That was a good job. Should we celebrate by eating? Or? Yes, we should celebrate by eating. Okay. I, I have to eat. I need to get back to the hospital. That's the last caller. Very good. Oh, thank did you. Did you, in fact, start the tape before the... Yes, it's still running as a matter of fact. Oh. Uh, did you get the... I, I, we can the music, music would not come on. Oh, shit. So I just wasted a lot. Next CD. Hey, Mom. Did you? What? I'm sorry. Music. The waste of my stuff. Oh, I see. Thanks. It's easy to not work. Stand in the liver and wait on me. Oh, sweet. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Commentary from the old one. Is what I heard. I haven't uh, seen the new one. The old really? one, yeah, but the old one wasn't as comedic. Huh. Okay. Uh, no, he didn't get to read that in the movie night. Like we had it set up for oh, a great idea. New one. Are you going to actually do the movie night? Uh, I think we're talking about it. Uh, I'm pretty sure we are. I don't know when. All right. A movie night? Yeah. yeah. Um, so we got the new chance already? Okay, no, I've changed my mind. I'm not taking that guy seriously. They got it that called to say we were bad representatives. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We need to say what needs to be said. I'm not going to buy it. He is he is one of those atheists terrified of a backlash against Christians by Christians. Yeah, maybe. Well, crud. Oh, let me move it in the Well, hello, Joe. <laughs>